Your Excellency, my Lords, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, first, I would like to thank you for your kind words about the strong relationship which our two countries enjoy. It is a great honour to have you with us today. On behalf of the House of Lords, I thank you for your moving tribute to Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth, not least as a leading champion of the Commonwealth. I also offer our sincere condolences on the death of Archbishop Desmond Tutu last year, a great man who courageously dedicated himself to serving others in the pursuit of equality, justice, and peace. As a youth, my lifelong interest in politics was nurtured by reading about the situation in South Africa and learning from the writings and speeches of Archbishop Tutu and fellow clerics. Archbishop Tutu and his colleagues forced me to contemplate on the central question of who is my neighbour. They correctly reflected that neighbours might perhaps be many thousands of miles from us, but we're still neighbours whose needs, values and progress we must support. And my theme, Mr President, in thanking you today is South Africans and Britons as neighbours. Occasions such as today remind us of the importance of engagement between our peoples and parliaments. It is through such engagement that we can form strong bonds. As Commonwealth nations, we share many values. We believe in upholding democracy, in the international rules-based system, and in protecting human rights. The South African Constitution drawn up in 1994 with your considerable input is one of the most progressive in the world. Our parliaments share many personal connections. We welcomed President Mandela to this parliament in 1996 and his great legacy still lives on with his statue, as you mentioned, standing proudly in Parliament Square. I also remember his statue being erected in London's South Bank in 1985, as many British people called for his release. That monument is now protected and listed in recognition of its historical and international significance. The House of Lords is proud to have counted among its number the late Lord Joffe, who defended Nelson Mandela at the Rivonia trial. Previously, the British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan had chosen the Parliament in Cape Town to make his speech about the wind of change sweeping Africa at one of the darkest moments of apartheid in 1960. But bringing forward decolonization across the continent, which eventually, after many years, saw freedom come to South Africa. Our respective parliaments continue to have much to share and the ambition to work together. Beyond Westminster, the UK has a diverse range of connections to those who built the modern South Africa. Oliver Tambo, for example, has his own statue in the North London borough of Haringey, which was his temporary home during his exile whilst fighting apartheid. It is reassuring to witness that since becoming president in 2018, you have led the way in restoring the Mandela vision for your country. I wonder if you and the people of South Africa realize the importance to the people of the United Kingdom of the success of the Rainbow Nation. We see South Africa as a beacon of hope, 
of reconciliation and of the common good. One that inspires other nations to follow you. Your personal commitment to educational reforms is well known, respected and valued. As a former teacher, I share your passion. Finding ways to help young people achieve their potential is crucial. And as Senior Deputy Speaker, I spent an hour each week speaking virtually to young students through our Learn with the Lords program. I always came away heartened by their optimism and enthusiasm. And last month, my office hosted two work experience students from multicultural schools in London boroughs that are less prosperous than other parts of this city. Their reflections on the week they spent with us reminded me once again that our parliament is a place for all communities across the entire United Kingdom. Your Excellency, you spoke of the links between our two nations and those links continue to deepen. We work together to protect mutual security interests, improve trade and promote inclusive growth. South Africa, as mentioned, is our largest trading partner in Africa. And wait for it, Mr. President. British consumers have a love of South African wine. <laughs> as I'm sure many members of the House of Lords and indeed the House of Commons can testify. <laughs> there is also a large South African community here in the United Kingdom. The Springboks victory in the 29 Rugby World Cup, which you attended, captained by Sia Khaleesi and cheered in many pubs and bars in West London was more than a sporting triumph. It showed, to paraphrase Archbishop Tutu, that what would have seemed impossible 30 years ago, a black captain of the Springboks became possible. I also hear on the grapevine, Mr. President, that you support Manchester United. <laughs> I only wish you luck with that at the present time. <laughs> Archbishop Tutu's steadfast faith and confident application of belief to everyday social problems served as an inspiration for all of us in the political sphere. Understanding his approach brings me back to the central question of who is my neighbour? A simple question which we politicians cannot evade if our pursuit at its core is to have a moral purpose. You, Mr President, are my neighbour and we are your neighbours. Our world is complex and the present circumstances expose our vulnerability and the potential for increased polarization, fragility and disconnection. In such a fractious environment, we need the ability to hold our opinions whilst walking together and on occasions learning to travel in agreeable disagreement. So let us become expert in the art of the encounter. We cannot achieve a better world other than working together globally, whether that be through addressing, as you mentioned, inequality, responding to migration, resolving climate change, and pursuing peace and disarmament. You are our vital neighbours and the realisation of the Rainbow Nation and South Africa's role on the global stage is significant. There is much for us all to learn from you. I conclude in a spirit of joint working and shared endeavour by thanking you, Your Excellency, for your visit to Parliament today. 
We look forward to our enduring and positive relationship and we wish you and the people of South Africa well for the future. So many thank yous.